the charge sentinel is one of the most unique features in the game to be honest because we it is very never situational mm-hmm. yeah it was so random uh when it was introduced initially oh no there's another squad attacking Well, we're going to keep this rolling though. It's time. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's do it. We're going into the, into the big one. Like, I think this is kind of where the conversation starts to get interesting is the longbow versus the sentinel, which one comes out on top. We've been comparing the longbow to a lot of guns lately. Um, and so the sentinel is the latest competitor. I'm excited to see where it shakes out, but I think these two are essentially, we just told you, these are the two you can use in the end game. Okay. In a vacuum, you have all your attachments, you have both options. Which one should you rock with is kind of the question we're going to hope to answer right now. Yeah, and we're trying to get into all the details to put these two weapons against Mm -hmm. each other. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to speed and forgiveness of the longbow versus the power of the sentinel. Mm -hmm. You have that massive headshot versus the magazine of the longbow. Longbow at the top end has five more shots than the Sentinel. Mm-hmm. That is epic. It's forgiving. Mm-hmm. It it really, really is. You just have a lot more opportunity to do that potential damage. But in terms of time to kill or shots to kill, you only need to be 10% more accurate with the Sentinel than the mm-hmm. Longbow in order to be successful. So you have a little bit of an advantage using the longbow that you have a little bit more forgiveness because of the magazine. But like we talked about, the longbow requires four shots. The sentinel requires three shots to knock purple. How much of a difference is that? You know, if Mm -hmm. we just throw accuracy out the window, does hitting one additional shot make a significant difference to how powerful the sentinel is? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a tough question to answer, especially in the concept of sniping. Because that's where this changes compared to other weapons when it is, hey, with the longbow and the sentinel, yes, it's four to kill on the longbow, three on the sentinel, but how do you snipe? Like, is It's that, okay, I'm going to line it up, take my deep breath, and then send my shot. And if you are really taking the time to maximize each shot, then in theory, maybe the sentinel does have a case to be made that it could come out on top because you're valuing each shot much more rather than kind of the pure accuracy necessity out of other guns that you really run into. Totally. I I think that when we talk about actual marksmanship and accuracy Mm -hmm. of the player, the Sentinel has to be the favorite. And it not only comes down to having to hit less shots, so you're not necessarily going to be faster with the Sentinel, but you're not going to waste as much ammo And you're not going to give the enemy as much opportunity to react. You know, if Mm -hmm. they get hit once, maybe they keep going. If they hit twice, now they start panicking. And then you hit them a third time, they're down. (laughs) Versus having to hit four shots gives them just more opportunity to use their abilities, find cover, Mm -hmm. heal, get out of there, whatever they have to do. But the Sentinel, if you're talking about marksmanship, you have to discuss the headshot potential. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just massive 176 charge compared to just under 120 with the longbow. It's It's a massive difference. difference. It's Mm -hmm. almost an entire extra shot of the longbow in order to make that difference up. And if we were to play out a situation where you use both snipers and the first shot is a headshot, bang, everything's great. How many like subsequent shots do you have to hit in order to finish them off? Well, the Sentinel has to only hit two. So you hit that first shot, even if it's 140 uncharged, then you only have to hit one more for 70 in order to win the knock. Longbow, even if you hit the the first shot as a headshot, you're still going to have to follow up with two additional shots. So Mm -hmm. even when we talk about headshots, probably obvious, the Sentinel is going to edge out in terms of shots to kill. Yeah, it's such an interesting case to look at with the snipers because when you start talking headshots and you start talking the use case of it, well, a longbow 118 is massive. Do you push a 3 three v 3 immediately if you hit a 118, though, at a mid-range engagement? 
50-50 kind of depends on how your team wants to play. Sentinel at 176, though, that's a game changer and a fight yeah. ender in terms of if your team can quickly push depending on the legends you're using. And that's real powerful in of itself. It is like the baby Kraber for a reason. It doesn't get the full knock, but it does essentially take somebody out of a fight for a while and force a three yeah. on two at a pretty big advantage. And that's that's valuable when we start talking about why you use a sniper. Totally. I think a lot of listeners are going to hear that and say, man, I don't know if I'm going to push regardless of what happens. It's totally but fair. What you have to consider is that for a lot of players, if they're hit for 176, mm -hmm. they might Phoenix at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you hit somebody for 118, that's going to be a bat. So yeah. you have such more opportunity with the Sentinel to mm -hmm. have a window to attack. I don't recommend Phoenixing in that situation, but... <laughs> Gameplay analysis is going to dictate a lot of people are going to say, all right, they're really far. I have time. I'm going to enjoy mm -hmm. this Phoenix kit uh, while my teammates kind of scramble. And that's your opportunity to close the gap really quickly. Yeah. Anything that forces people to use body heals at any point in the game, that's a power advantage because Big time. those things take a minute. But that's also a recognized situation. You're playing against the lifeline, that'll change things. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's interesting. Know, that being said, that kind of crazy 176 headshot, that's mm -hmm. only achievable if you're charging the Sentinel. For sure. Well, for that niche situation, is it worth using two cells? You know, is it worth charging all the time? When should you charge? What do you think? I, I think the Sentinel for me, if I'm charging it, comes down to... I mean, obviously, let's mention real quick the gold armor. You know, if you are wearing gold armor, it takes one cell to charge the sentinel. And so that's going to be a huge advantage just in terms of loot balance. You're already at an advantage to carrying cells over bats, essentially. Not that you're not that one's better than the other in that situation, but you can to help your team out. So you can carry a lot of cells. It gets really easy to use. Charge your sentinel as much as you want if you have gold armor. But if you don't, which is the majority of games when you choose to run the sentinel, I still tend to charge the gun as much as possible. I will go out of my way to carry more cells. I will carry less grenades. I will carry less ammo of my other weapon to make sure I have more room for cells. And I, I think that is just about maximizing the gun. And that's an advantage you should try and go for. And it is for that 176. We kind of talked about how the 88 over the 70 is you know it, that's a nice bump but it's not changing your shots to kill at certain points in the game so it is for that 176 massive play that we just talked about can be a game ender for people yeah and so i think you answer it almost perfectly in that it's situation based if you're mm -hmm. in a high ground situation where you have some distance you have the opportunity to line up headshots yes you should charge if you're pinned down in a building and you're playing defense, no, yeah. mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't take the time to charge it up because it really isn't going to save you. It's not going to mm -hmm. save you on time. It's not going to deal enough damage to change the tides of the fight. And the time it takes and the resources it takes aren't really worth it unless you have the time to set it up and maximize. Hopefully you're using your second gun also in those situations Hopefully. when you're pinned down inside. Hopefully. Fingers Hopefully. crossed you're carrying that R301 or something. <laughs> yeah. The Charge Sentinel is one of the most unique features in the game, to be honest, because we it is very never situational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so random uh, when it was introduced initially. And remember when it used to take batteries? Yeah. You know? <laughs> what a crazy time that was. I would never charge it, even when it did disruptor it, it, abilities. Yeah, when it took off the Still entire 125 it. shield of a red Evo. <laughs> wasn't worth it, I'm telling you. I don't know what I said on the pod before, but now I'm saying <laughs> it wasn't worth it. Um, but when you do charge it, if you are firing as fast as possible, you get a maximum of eight charge shots. Mm -hmm. So that's really good, considering the fact that a magazine can hold seven. So you have a little bit of wiggle room to kind of wait, pace the shots as the charge decreases over time. Um, mm -hmm. But use two cells or one with a gold armor, and you're going to be able to get more damage out of the weapon. Pretty well good. Said, well said. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a niche opportunity when <laughs> comparing the Sentinel to the Longbow is what if you're using Rampart? You know, she is the LMG legend. 
but mm-hmm. amped cover increasing the damage output of weapons by 20 percent probably benefits snipers more than any other class of weapon because you're able to set it up have the high ground have the visibility and then get more damage out of these big heavy hitting shots if you charged up the sentinel it's a two shot kill behind amped cover because you're going to do 106 to the body with the sentinel that's crazy to me <laughs> and should really be maximized because you essentially have a weapon that is as good as the Kraber, but you have a lot more ammo and you have whatever sight you want on it. And it is much more forgiving and less valuable. But if you're mm-hmm. coupling these two together, wow, that is an easy two shot knock with really no skill required. You're maximizing mm-hmm. an ability and just hitting consistent damage that is massive. Henry's at the point with the pod where he's willing to take any opportunity to talk about Rampart so we can make sure to cover the amped cover because it is good, underrated for sure. She hit the slept on lep- lep- uh, slept on Legends episode for a reason. I, I think it's a pretty good case, though, with the Sentinel here. That thing is powerful in the later games, especially when people start to get into less situations where they can move around and you know where they're going to be and they're going to be pinned down. You got an opportunity to end somebody's game. Yeah. These two shot kills that don't require a headshot, you do have to stack every single thing possible in order to maximize it. But as you all should. things considered, <laughs> it's a couple cells and a tactical ability that you have a half a dozen charges of. So mm-hmm. It's not the highest price to pay for some major, major power. The long ball, on the other hand, if you're behind amped cover, it doesn't make a difference. You're still going to have to hit four shots against purple armor. So that's an interesting comparison. If you're playing Rampart, might want to favor the Sentinel for this reason. Well said. Boom, whole squad down. Hey, brother, not today. Maybe tomorrow.